share time with um, the Great Peace Walk when I came through the southern end. I, was, I got to spend some time with them, but I was a little bit younger. But then uh, as I grew older, the, this guy Yamato, this little Zen monk guy, he's, he's on it. He's always saying the same thing since I was a kid. Global peace now, you know, protect our um, protect our resources. Protect, you know, he is, he's the most heartful, amazing um, elder, and he uh, he taught me a lot um, how to run peace walks when I was younger because I was young and wanting to be involved. And he uh, we did a lot of walks every year. They do an annual walk, and uh, yeah. So I was kind of raised around doing this walk. Whenever I'd get home from traveling in Hawaii or whatever, they'd be like, oh, peace walk, April, okay. Back to on the road again, and just walking the, the peace walk. I recommend it if anybody has a chance to experience it. So what we're doing in Canada to Mexico is we're, Yamato's walked across the country many times, west to east, east to west, oftentimes going to the UN and to the government buildings, but we're basically doing a caravan. We, we, I've always wanted to live a more nomadic life, and I always thought it would be more closer to my retirement, but unfortunately, with all the information and the knowledge of uh, the potential mass extinction that we're, we're facing right now um, with uh, whales not being able to breed and all the plankton going crazy and, you know, Red Seas and such, uh, we're having a serious die-off right now worldwide, and it, it's reflective of the fifth largest mass extinction. So if we're gonna hit the mass extinction of number six, I don't know or not, but I definitely know that I feel like I have to start retiring. <laughs> so in, in retiring, I need to have a wagon, I need to have some horses, and I need to be like, focused on working with farms and trading with the farms. If I have chickens, you know, maybe they'll take some eggs for some broccoli. <laughs> or I'll work in their soil until until I can't work anymore. And I think and that's the only way we're actually going to see a change in our culture is if we take two steps back to go many, many steps forward. But right now, we've kind of hit a wall um, with the world. I mean, the human race is a dominant race. won't we'll probably die off, so don't worry. You're, not gonna, you're probably going to live, but what will you be living on is the question. And um, science will advance, and you will be able to live on something. But what is that, you know? Um, they're growing meat right now, it's pretty interesting. Vegetarian chicken is gonna be on the market soon. <laughs> but, so in all these like re realizations of the world, I realize it's time to retire. So I'm, I'm retiring. Um, a lot of Europe's children are retiring, which is pretty cool. So I kind of, um, I'm thinking that we have to have a mass walkout in 2020 mm -hmm. and or Join the Peace Caravan, and why we decided to call it Nomadic Peace Caravan, because this, this ain't gonna end. This is gonna be not just Canada to Mexico. We're gonna go to San Francisco. We're going to the East Coast, maybe not to DC if they're gonna be as stupid as they are, but we're gonna go to places that we can affect the communities and educate them. And there's been a lot of things on the table, working with seed um, banks. Yeah, the idea of the Peace Caravan, Nomadic Peace Caravan is Essentially what Yamato is doing down there, and he's going to be joining us, guaranteed. He's going to do his annual, he's doing his 25th one right now, um, starting the 8th which of April to the 22nd. And we're starting our first one on his 25th, and I thought that was very appropriate. Um, or no, we're starting our first one on his 26th, so it's kind of a new cycle for him. So when he's finished with his little walk that he does with this beautiful community down there that we'll be working with, he's going to join us up in Canada. Um, why we chose Nelson is that they decided to ban single-use plastic. They've decided to declare their lake a river. I mean, where's, where's <laughs> a, lake, a, a lake an entity. <laughs> and they, uh, and just like the Lake Erie is also now declared an entity by Pittsburgh. Right? No. Wait a minute. One of those cities declared an enti entity. But So municipal rights of nature is one thing that we're starting to focus on is the caravan. We have seeds. We want to be giving out seeds. We've been using seeds as flyers and promotional gear with Tribal Vision and other um, companies for a little bit of time. And now we're stepping up and we're going to be using these seeds. And we have a couple seed banks that are giving to us as well as we have our own um, farms and a Dharma farm and also in Taos, the Paul Mason Miracles, where we're growing seed crops and have been for a long time. Um, so now what we're doing is we got so much excess seed. Seed goes bad. It's easy to save a lot. Um, if you know what you're doing. And once you have a ton, if you don't get rid of it within a year, it loses, you know, 50% germination. But really, 
the truth is, is if you keep that in a good container, it can last 10 years, you know, but the, the market recognizes it at 50% loss. So a lot of like Masa Seed Foundation, um, Ross's project, and the the seeds have changed yet, or his name, but they're doing that in Boulder, and they're gonna donate a ton of seed to us to help promote um, this project. So we're gonna be giving out non-GMO seed, heirloom seeds from north to south. We're gonna be working with um, 501C4s, which are uh, government organizations, or yeah, like, uh, so we're non-political. We're a 501C3, we just applied. But our, we have to work with 501C4s to help them with their petitioning process to basically declare is what we're going with the rights of nature movement, which is kind of taking the world right now, um, which gives the, the ability of the, the river to have a stance against these corporations. Right now, rivers are resources. You can piss in them, destroy them all you want, and very unlikely anybody's gonna do anything about it. There's not enough EPA, and there probably never will be, and their fines are too small. People make 10 million a year to 100 million a year um, off of polluting these rivers, essentially, um, polluting next to them, which leaks into them. And the amount of damage it does downstream is uh, unreally unreplaceable uh, and can be fixed with the right biology. And, and all, you know, in time, can always be fixed. The Caravan is a movement, and we were partially taking on that name too because of what has the stupidity of what's happened and the disrespect to that name essentially that's been given and the disrespect to the our brothers and sisters down south of the border. So what we figure is if we're gonna bring a whole bunch of people south, okay, we're going on vacation. It's gonna be fun. We're going to a preserve in El Golfo, Mexico, and in this guy's amazing and they've already they're already working on declaring Mexico declaring the southern end of the Colorado River an entity. And and this guy's awesome and he owns his own little like village pretty much that he's like, I don't know, he like I gave to all his families or something, but there's like this little dirt road village. It's next door to El Golfo, and we're still like in talks with him, so I haven't fully released all that information, but it's the bottom of the Colorado River, and that's where we're headed, whether or not this little village fully takes us under their um, umbrella or not. But we might be throwing a festival as the idea down there, and we'll definitely be advertising that within a month, if we are. And um, so, and then why we're starting in Nelson, it's, outlawing and respecting its rivers, it's outlawing single-use plastics, which are a serious problem for the whales right now, and a lot of other um, fish. How can people get involved so with there's, that there's they can't make it? Tons of, uh, tons of ways to help. Right now we have, um, we do have a donate um, option, and it's soon going to be under a 501c3, so we'll be able to give you um, donations. Donations now, that are kind of going to come out of people's own pocket until we get it more of the ball rolling. But in the next month, we should have our all our 501c basic stuff together where we can uh, take donations from the state of Colorado only until we get the national status. So definitely we can use donations. We also need land every 11 miles because that's about what you want to push people on a daily basis um, of hiking. So there's a lot of land that we need to acquire. And some of that will be BLM and national forest lands. Um, and we will be paying for permits if the walkers exceed 75 people will have to pay for permits on both BLM and National Forest Lands. But they can't necessarily stop us. We can apply and they kind of just have to say yes. And so what we're going to be doing with the towns is a similar thing. It's, if they say no, it's only because we're charging money. So essentially, if we're not charging money, they can't really stop us from having a family picnic ever, really. And that's the truth. And that's why Rainbow still exists, essentially, in this country. But whatever. But so, but yeah, we need a lot of support in communities from Religious organizations, we're going to be doing river blessings at every river. Um, so tribal leaders, um, chiefs that you may know on our walk. We have a Google map of the walk right now. Um, and there's about four spots or five spots, about five spots that go completely backwards. Where there'll be no support vehicles and there'll be no supply vehicles. So that means people will be hiking um, and or horsebacking or uh, bicycling on those trails. Um, the rest will be on the sides of roads and we want to, we're going to try to we have a media uh, lady right now that's researching all the newspapers and radio stations, and we're looking for people. We have like one person in Arizona representing what we call community outreach, which they'll be contacting all the different organizations that care about the river and or uh, are religious organizations that might care about the river, and to come to the, the local river blessing. Um, where the walk will be held. So as, as the, the months go on, we'll start releasing the dates for the actual where we're gonna be. 
There's a lot of time. We opened the walk up for nine months. This is only 1,008-ish miles um, from where we're zigzagging down like we are to south. We're going pretty much from BC, Nelson, BC, to uh, through Montana um, by the, the sacred, um, sacred rock there. Uh, no longer called Devil's Tower. I forget the Wichita name of this. <laughs> Renee. Um, what's the name of the? Monto Tipula. Monto Bear, 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 Bear House, right? Bear Lodge, right? So we're gonna go to that that tower. We're gonna bless it, and we're gonna do a little event. Maybe go to Wounded Knee is the idea. We're gonna go to Wounded Knee, and then we're gonna head south to Boulder and the Front Range. So we'll be walking right through here, and the more people we have on the road, the more media will recognize us and and if you yeah. have any more questions we have to wrap it up now for time yes. but if you have more, more questions Shaitani is here summer is here they'd be happy to answer any questions you all have about the peace caravan so show some love to these beautiful people